we're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your host, Spicy Madi, and today's episode of The Spicy Life, Is It True? Black Men Don't Cheat. Okay, and here to join me in the G spot, that's guest spotlight. Don't get scared yet, you guys. I have Carrie Neal, who's the founder and chief social change agent for Keeping It 100 LA, a nonprofit organization committed to the rebuilding and rebirth of black love and perpetual existence of healthy black families. Now, in its eight year of existence, Keeping It 100 LA provides an emotionally safe forum through events and master classes for black men and women to discuss and explore a variety of relationship challenges. Through this exchange, several misleading themes and stereotypes about black men and women are debunked and demystified. The goal is for black men and women to see each other in a positive and renewed light. Untainted by their own relationship experience, Carrie received his Bachelor of Arts in Psychology from Cal State Fullerton and his Master of Science in Leadership and Management from the University of Laverne. Oh, the crowd goes wild for Carrie. Yes. <laughs> Okay, in addition to that, we have the beautiful and lovely Stephanie Farmer joining us in the G-Spot, and she is born and raised native of Southern California and a second-generation Angelino. She received her BS degree in biology from UC Irvine, a Master of Administ Health Administration and degree, and a Master of Teaching degree, both from University of Southern California, USCA. She has over 20 years of experience working as a healthcare finance director, and she will soon be transitioning her corporate experience to teaching and encouraging young people of color to pursue careers in math or science. Hey. Okay, so we have two amazing people right now in the G spot. The reason why they have been joined in on the conversation is because um, they're going to help uh, demystify and change or at least enlighten us on some stereotypes that are going on. And a huge one that's trending right now is, is it true? Black men don't cheat because I really want to know and I'm sure our audience wants to know as well. We uh, also have an event coming up that we'll talk about in just a second that you guys can join in on the fun that I will be hosting yours truly. But in order to warm them up, I always make my guests start off with SPICY, self, passion, intimacy, communication and learning to say yes. So they have to answer one very tough question from me, which is when did you first fall in love with yourself? I'm going to throw it to you, Stephanie, since uh, ladies first. When I was 10 years old. Okay, you got to walk us through. What happened? How'd you fall in love with yourself? I fell in love with myself at 10 years old with my, the help of my parents. I started having some identity issues growing up as a kid with girls making fun of me. And my parents said, you know what? You're beautiful. People are going to always have something to say about you throughout your life. Facts. This is true. Okay. And uh, Carrie, when did you first fall in love with yourself? I'm going to say I fell in love with myself when I was like about three and a half years old. Wait, what? <laughs> Okay. I mean, I think like, like three, yeah, something like, and, and I'll tell you why. So it was interesting. It was like in the Head Start class, and we were given this assignment to just draw some things, you know, just kind of keep us busy, right? We're three years old. So anyway, so I saw everyone else draw. I didn't know what to draw, and I began to draw what they drew, but my drawing looked far better than mm. theirs. I said, wow. And the teacher came up and said, wow, Carrie, this looks really, really cool. And I kind of felt special, you know, because I could draw. My talent was a little bit more um, uh, better than advanced. theirs. It was advanced, advanced for three. So it was advanced forth. for three. And then it just kind of took off from there. So I've been in love with myself ever since. So. <laughs> okay, well, I like <laughs> to right. see. I like to see the confidence. He's been like, oh yeah, I've been obsessing about myself and just in love with myself. Now you guys have to answer the other tough one. Okay. Um, because at three years old, usually my follow-up question is, did you fall in love with someone else before yourself? But it sounds like you fell in love with yourself first. What about you, Stephanie? You were 10. Mm -hmm. So did you have a crush on someone before you had a crush on yourself? Actually, I had a crush on someone immediately after I had a crush on myself. Hey, that's I'm how glad it works. you asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works. That's how it works. You love yourself first. The rest will follow. Yep, exactly. Okay, so you, um, we're going to do the spicy dish where we get into a little news and gossip. I want to get your guys' opinions on this. Um, there's a video that's going around where this guy has publicly proposed to his girlfriend. Oh, I saw that. And yeah. he gets rejected. Yeah. I have a few friends who sent me the, the video. I think I saw it on like Spiritual World, something on one of the, or maybe it was like, uh, I don't know, Shade Room. But when I watched the video, I was proud of her. My friends, on the other hand, said she should have publicly said yes and then later on told him no. Yeah. If you get proposed to publicly, but you don't want to marry the person, do you say face for them or do you tell the truth? I'm tossing it to you. Go ahead, Carrie. Okay. Well, okay. Well, firstly, let me just say this. I don't understand how any man gets denied a proposal. And I'll say that because of this. Okay. 
there's far too much information that you know in advance of the proposal yep. to know whether you're good or not. I mean, dude had a whole full blown production out there. Oh yeah, it like and a she told him no. News crew too. <laughs> I have heard. I, I don't know anyone has done this, but I have heard that men will leverage a proposal because maybe they cheated mm. or because they want to gain. You know, things are moving fast, fast along in terms of exclusivity. So mm. they kind of like, you know, they pass go and so forth and they go straight to straight for the gusto. So, yeah. So, yeah. So but um, I, I do think in terms of the woman, in terms of if she didn't want to marry him, I do understand the whole thing about saving face. But no, because there's so much, you know, backlash you get, you know, for saying no later. Well, I said yes, but... What about right, because you're putting on the now. ring, everything. Now you have to actually return the ring. Yeah. Explain to him why you said yes for everybody else and no, like, privately for yeah. him. Yeah. In addition to that, she may have a side boo. She may right. not really want to commit. Now she has to explain to her side right. boo or to the other people that she's dating why she did this public yes. And also, too... It's lying. You are right. lying to the person. If you say yes, whether the cameras are on or not, and it's truly in your heart, a no. And to your point, Carrie, I agree with you. Marriage should not be a surprise. Yeah, it's right. You That's should right. know. That it is not you something know. that just pops yeah. up on you like, oh, my God, I just want to, like, uh, you know, the line. Like, this is something that you're not gambling with your future, right? You should be having discussions on their view of marriage. Right. Do they see you in the picture as their life partner? What is their, you know, what is the long-term goals for your guys' relationship? Those should all be questions that are answered in advance before you invest in that production crew, before you invest in that ring, before you freaking invest in having your mama and your daddy come out. <laughs> like, right. he, probably, he probably flew some, some family members out. Like, you don't know what went on or what that the level of that cost was. But what it did cost him was his face. You know, it cost him his ego. It cost him his pride. And unfortunately, it would have cost her that too had she lied publicly yeah. even more. Yeah. So, you know, I'm proud of her. Second thing, there's this video going on right now with, um, you know, kind of shows like, I think T.I. and um, uh, what's the other one? T.I. Dang, I can't remember the name of the artist who's in the video, but T.I. is schooling Little Bow Wow right now on, um, like, it shows an after video after Bow Wow goes on stage. He publicly humiliates um, Sierra, his Sierra, ex. Yeah. And it kind of shows, like, there's a video, it's two videos. The first one is him on stage calling Sierra out of her name, saying, right. I had that B first right. at a performance that he was at. And then there's a video of T.I. telling him, like, dog, you were tripping for that. Like, oh, it was him and Nelly. It was him and Nelly in the video. And he's like, yeah. oh, you messed up. You shouldn't have done that. Like, I appreciate, you know, the big dogs, the older brothers, letting him have, you know, a piece of their mind. In addition to, um, we're not being well received to this. Like, it's something that it was a video that was recorded a long time ago, but it's circulating now. Uh, and it shows him not just disrespecting her, but like. She has moved on. It's not even thinking about right, you. Exactly. Right. Why are you still tripping off of her? Why do men hold on to relationships after the girl moves on? Y'all don't care about us till we move on. Go yeah. ahead, Stephanie. That's interesting that you say that because I always hear it the opposite way that it's women who hang on to stuff. But, you know, now that you've reminded me of that, that is definitely true. Because when you think about men and women and breakups, women tend to be more outward with the breakup and going through those stages where men tend to just try to jump into something or they act as though, you know, they're not uh, affected by that mm -hmm. relationship breakup and then things manifest later. So I think what we're seeing with this video with Bow Wow and his behavior isn't uncommon with a lot of men where they'll hold on to something and then suddenly when they see that that woman is with somebody else yep. or she might be with someone else, oh, I just lost her. You know, because unfortunately for a lot of men, they don't feel the absence until that woman is with somebody else. It's what I call FOMO. Facts. Facts. Oh, yes, it is FOMO. Yes. FOMO. It's a fear of missing out because you had that entire time while we were together to treat me amazing, to make sure we keep this relationship healthy. And then now that you potentially can't have me anymore or you see that I'm even starting to move on, all of a sudden, that's why uh, we'll get a text like, hey, boo, how you been? I miss you. Like the moment we even start to heal or move on, that's they will right. come for us. And I don't even think it's their fault. I think it's Satan testing us. <laughs> like, you for real, for real, you ready to move on? You think you, you're healed and whole? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dangle this little temptation back in your way if you know what's better for you. Let's see. Let's see. So, uh, you know, but, in, but yes, there is something to be said about men when they see us happy. 
I want the male opinion, Carrie. Why don't you guys want to see us move on and be happy and forget about you and kick you to the curb? You know, we just want to save face. Well, first of all, it's, it's straight hating all, all, all the way around. I mean, it's unfortunate that maybe he didn't really cherish her the way that he probably should have. Yeah. And now that she's blown up, you know, she's with uh, Russell Wilson. She is who's relationship now the goals. highest paid quarterback in the NFL and so forth, doing quite well. And I'm not sure exactly what Bawa has going on now, mm -hmm. but uh, certainly not at the level and magnitude of Sierra. I mean, you know, it's probably some low-key admiration, but big-time jealousy. And to the degree that he feels low, he wants to somehow bring her down. Yeah. I mean, it's um, it's very unfortunate. And, you know, I, I believe it goes both ways. But in this case, you know, it just goes to show, you know, like if you were a good woman, you probably need to hang on to her. I mean, because <laughs> she's going to evolve and so forth. And you're going to be looking stupid a little bit later on. That's exactly what she did, too. Because the worst, right. if you want to kill him, you want to hurt his ego, find a man who treats you better than him. Oh, right. that is how you get him to suffer. It's not slashing his cars. It is not like right. calling him out, you know, his name or calling her out. Like, it is literally moving on to something better that mm -hmm. shows you that you are worthy of love. Hey, look it. I found love. That's the big, biggest middle finger that you can give right there is self-love. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about keeping it 100. <laughs> because I feel like everyone really needs to understand what the organization does. I want everybody to understand what you guys are trying to do to uplift our community, to educate us. But before we do that, before we give you insight into, is it true, do black men cheat? We have to show love to our spicy sponsors. <laughs> okay, so first spicy sponsor that we got to show love to is who's in the hot seat right now. Keeping it 100 LA. Okay. Keep it at 100 is Southern California Black professionals ages 25 and up. If you guys are uh, 25 and up, there's an event that's coming up that this organization is throwing. So are you perplexed by today's dating scene in a relationship or a situationship, wanting to get married but not sure if the opposite sex is interested in such a commitment, wondering what's wrong with brothers? Men, are you wondering what's up with today's Black women? I know that there's a lot of people who are experiencing <laughs> these right now. Each right. one of these alone can be a, a, a podcast topic, okay? But what I want you guys to know is I will be hosting, but uh, what you don't want to do is miss the annual Keeping It 100 LA Summer Soiree. It's on Saturday, August 3rd, so it's coming up ASAP. It's at 7 p.m. at an undisclosed private residence in West Hills, and we know you know we love that private VIP exclusivity. So come out and enjoy good food, good drinks, stimulating conversation with Black professionals, 20 and up from all over Southern California and today's landscape on dating, committed relationships. We're about to talk about all of it. After the discussion, it's a party with DJ K. Neal playing the best hip-hop and R&B, old school reggae, special guests are... <laughs> My, yours truly, <laughs> relationship <laughs> expert herself in this seat right now, Spicy Madi. And joining me will be Chris Kaze Role from Hip Hop Project and CEO of Together Apart. So don't want you to forget because I know you're caring about what the wardrobe is. It is all white linen. That means that make sure that you do some crunches, make sure that you, you know, do a little <laughs> run first. Don't eat any uh, red spaghetti before the event, but it is all white. And make sure that you wear your finest California sexy chic white attire. And so for more information, you guys want to make sure that you go to keepingit100la.org or call 424-527-5088. You guys can also go to westhills2019.eventbrite.com. That's westhills2019.eventbrite.com to get your tickets. I'm going to be there. Come have a drink with me. Come get some spicy tips, some information. Chris uh, and I will be given all kind of wealth of knowledge on relationships and leading the discussion. And I'm sure you guys have some hot topics that you want to know and that you're dying to have answered. So come out with us. And so thank you guys so much for, you know, bringing this to our attention, for holding this event. Our other spicy sponsor that we got to show love to is Audible. So uh, one thing that if you guys um, haven't noticed is I always have these fabulous, you know, hard copy books right here that are on top of uh, my, you know, office space inside of my studio. I can't carry these with me when I need to catch up on my reading. So <laughs> because listening makes us smarter and more connected people, it makes us better partners, parents and leaders. And there's no better place to start listening than Audible. It makes my life so much easier because I don't have to carry, uh, hurt my back carrying all these books and I can also catch up on all of the readings that I want to do. Uh, I recently just had Shannon Boudrum and um, she did, I think, the Game of Desire. I'm going to make sure that I download that and li listen because I definitely want to be educated and also educate my clients as well. And Audible is where so many inspiring voices and compelling stories open listeners up to new experiences and ways of thinking. And as a relationship expert, I'm constantly trying to improve my 
practice and my personal relationships. So, um, you know, I'm definitely going to be making sure that I listen, listen, listen when I'm in the car, uh, when I'm, you know, down the streets, uh, no matter where I'm pulling up to, I'm making sure that I have my audible. So start listening today and you're going to make sure that you guys listen up to all of the Amazon Prime members for a limited time, you can start an Audible membership and save 66% on your first three months, a total of $30 off. That's like getting three months for the price of what, one? So you'll pay $4.95 per month for the first three months. And after that, it's $14.95 per month. This offer is valid 7-1 through 19. Also, wait, sorry, I said that wrong. The offer is valid 7, wait, that's July. The offer is valid July 1st, okay? (laughs) And it ends July 31st. So you want to make sure that you hop on this ASAP. You'll be able to make sure that you download it right now just to get this specific offer. Also visit audible.com slash spicy life or text spicy life to 500 500 to get started today. Once again, that's S P I C Y L I F E or text 500 500 and get started today. S P I C Y L I F E. Once again, visit audible.com slash spicy life or text spicy life S P I C Y L I F E to 500 500 to get started today. Okay. And we, now we are back to the show. We had to show some love to our spicy sponsors. Okay. So now we can get into all of that amazing juice. I want you guys to start off with these tough questions. So first, you're just going to give us a little bit of background about the organization, right? I read your bios. I still don't necessarily know why do I why do I need to participate with the organization? What is it offering that me as a young black and Mexican, you know, a Latina, what what would I gain from attending these workshops, attending these classes, and going to your events? Well, I think that the the compelling and intriguing thing about keeping 100. What we do is that we provide an emotionally safe environment for you to keep it 100, to be completely transparent about anything and everything that you've ever struggled with in a relationship, particularly in the, well, with the opposite sex and particularly the unique dynamics that take place within the black community. Mm. Now, we know there are relationship challenges in all communities, but we find that African-Americans mm. unfortunately lead in all of the categories and negative categories far beyond any other ethnic group. Mm. You talk about single parent uh, leading the household. Yep. We're upwards of 85% that's led by women, the absence of men. You talk to any random African-American woman who desires to get married, and she'll tell you about her challenges she has with the opposite sex. You'll talk to men that talk mm. about men. It like all the sisters, they just kind of like gold diggers and this and that and so forth. They got all these crazy high standards, whatever it may be. And so we believe that uh, while we sort of get caught up in the minutia mm-hmm. of all the things that kind of keep us apart, we believe a lot of this is a byproduct of how we were raised, yeah. not seeing positive role models, that not being modeled to us. I mean, stuff we may see on music videos and things like that to continue to perpetuate the this media. negative imagery yeah. that is absolutely manifested in the landscape of, um, of dating. And so... Uh, our, our goal is to be able to say, look, we all have challenges, but why don't we talk about it? Not to mention, it is not uncommon for us to sort of paint with a broad brush with our own experiences, meaning that we may have had a number of negative encounters with the opposite sex, and we will assume that that applies to everyone. Mm-hmm. Well, this forum provides you an opportunity to talk about those challenges, and you may think this quite mainstream, and may find out that may just be unique yeah. To your experiences, because the common denominator, common denominator, excuse me, in those uh, encounters is you. Absolutely. So it's an opportunity to really say, wow. And while I like to think that I know a little bit about relationships because I've been <laughs> in this space a while. I mean, I get schooled all the time. Yeah. And I'll be the first one to say that, you know, there's this old saying that good judgment comes from experience and experience mm. comes from bad judgment. Wait, say that one more time. Yeah. Good judgment comes from experience. Good judgment comes from experience. And experience, and experience comes, comes from bad, from bad judgment. judgment. Spicy tip right there. Yeah. So it's not that I have all this uh, profound insight and wisdom. I've just made a bunch of dumb mistakes over oh, yeah. the years. Mm-hmm. And I got a little insight after making those mistakes. So. And I want to say ditto to Kerry and everything that he said about being involved with Keeping It 100. Because given that the conversation at the event is very candid and it's an emotionally safe environment, what we also hope is that by listening to someone being very transparent, you might be helping somebody in the room by talking about your experiences 
and just being very honest about it. Um, I know for me personally, you know, I've had my relationship challenges too, being a single successful African-American woman, oh, yeah. you know, living here in Los Angeles. Los Angeles is not an easy place to navigate in just as a person. You know, it's very expensive to live here. It's very hard to sustain a living here, let alone trying to, you know, find someone and build a relationship with. But it's not impossible. A lot of people have been raised here mm. because they love Los Angeles and they want to stay here. And why not? It's a wonderful place. And there are a lot of people who come here looking for those opportunities, not only for work, but for love, too. So when I talk to people about Keeping It 100 and I tell them about it, and this is men and women, mm. they like what we're doing. And they yeah. say, you know, that's actually a good thing. I think what might scare some people, for lack of a better word, is that they kind of feel like, okay, are you setting things up where you're going to have all the men on one side of the room, <laughs> all the women on one battle side of the sexes. room? Yeah. And it's the battle no. of the sexes. I like battle of the sexes. Yeah. <laughs> and I say, well, yes and no. <laughs> because, and that's part of the reason why we like to have folks like yourself and Chris and others on hand, because you help balance that conversation yeah. along with us. Because if people hear, hey, wait a minute now, you can't just make an assumption that right. all men are like this and all women are like this, you know, you'll learn. I know that just speaking from a woman's perspective, the challenge that we have with finding someone, especially the more successful we get. And I know that there are a lot of men out there that want love, but unfortunately, to Carrie's point, they may have been treated um, not so nice by women because yeah. they don't have the income. Maybe they don't have the height. Maybe they don't have the look, you know, and they're diamonds in the rough. Yeah. And it's the same thing with women. Perhaps they don't have that, you know, Instagram image but they are also beautiful diamonds in the rough. And we just want to help hopefully facilitate these people, people coming together and having the confidence and the encouragement to go and seek one another. This yeah. is fabulous. Yeah. I love this. That's a couple other things. As yeah, well. go ahead. So, so there are two things that just sort of come to mind. First of all, all of this is about, you know, married couples just don't fall from the sky. <laughs> married Preach. couples are made of a <laughs> single man and a single woman that decide to get together and hook it up. And they have children and so forth. But if that single man and single woman decide to get married and there's huge dysfunction yeah. that's going on, they're mm -hmm. going to replicate that. So what we want to do, ultimately, mm -hmm. we want, we're trying to save the black family unit at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Because if you can... It's so necessary. You, any, you, any negative statistic, trend that's in a black community, you name it, drugs, uh, um, Violence, you know, crime, whatever it is, jail. can yeah. all yep. be traced down to the breakdown of the black family. Absolutely, yes. So, you know, it's maybe sort of like this uh, alternative way of sort of addressing it. And we're not by any means saying that we're a silver bullet to resolve any and all issues in our community. But what we are saying that if we get men and women on the same page to say, you know, something, we've all we both have our challenges and disadvantages. We got a lot to learn, but together we can make this work. Yeah. They can replicate that. And that's what we ultimately hope to do. So, And knowledge is power. The insight, the conversations, it, it lands. Hopefully, right. you know, there will be this inception of this message and this imagery and this experience that will be able to penetrate and hopefully maybe not reverse all of the damage that's been done to us, but we can be more mindful right. and operate from a place of self-awareness and social awareness to be able to make the changes that are necessary. Right. So I'm... That's the main reason why I agree to the event. I was like, okay, yeah. this is this is stands for everything that the Spicy Life, uh, my relationship consulting firm is, and what I try to do on the podcast by bringing guests like you on is right. to educate in order to empower. Right, right, absolutely, absolutely. And then two, it's not like this is this huge gigantic therapy session that's going on. I mean, we make it fun. You come it's gonna in. Be a turn up. It's, it's like, <laughs> uh -huh. you know, we got the cool vibes going on. You got the bar there. You got some food. Anytime we meet. have to wear all white, you know, it's going to be sexy. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. And so then we sort of transition from there after like about like an hour or so, you know, we're transitioning. You guys will come up. And then, you know, it's we have pre-scripted questions that talks about everything. Like, do you believe in prenups? Should a man pay for the first date? You know, would you date um, someone with kids or whatever it may be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, different scenarios as well, even um, hot topic things that we just sort of, that you mentioned earlier. And so it's fun and engaging, but it's very insightful. Mm -hmm. And then obviously there's a party afterwards. 
But it's amazing. Here's another thing, too. Not that we are trying to be like a dating service. <laughs> but we've got like five people in our yes. eight-year existence that have gotten married. One that's engaged now that's getting married, uh, having a destination wedding. That met at our event. Hey, exactly. So you might yes. meet the love of your life there. You never know. And, and you know, you I, think never part know. Of it, I think a part of it is because what happens is we provide this, again, this emotionally safe forum. Mm. People can be honest, really say what they feel and mean. And they let their guards down, and people can really begin to see them for who they really truly are. And so after, yeah, that was a real cool thing. By the way, can I get your digits and so forth? And they go out on a date, and then the rest is history. So it's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Well, is cheating going to come up while we're on the on the panel? Oh, uh, absolutely. Are we talk about cheating? Okay, perfect. So then this is going to be a warm up to the panel discussion that we're going to have. Right. So we're going to give a little insight right now. So today's episode of the Spicy Life, we're talking about. Is it true black men don't cheat? That's why I brought you guys in here too, not just to talk about keeping it 100, but also I want your guys' insight on this idea that is trending, right? Um, I believe it was started by Charlemagne. It's mm -hmm. gained a lot of popularity. They've been talking mm -hmm. about it a lot on The Breakfast Club. And now there's even a song that Charlemagne recently did right. uh, that is he like put out to, I, who did he do the song with? Um, wait, let me look that up real quick. Whoa. With a, uh, hold on, I'm about to tell you guys right now. All right. Who do you do that song with? I'm like, okay. Anywho, Charlamagne put out a song too. <laughs> In addition to uh, this trending topic, and he's trying to, I guess, I don't know if he's taking it upon himself to dispel the myth that black men cheat, but is it true they don't or do they? Because in my experience, all men cheat. I've dated across all color lines. I've dated you know, different, like continent, I've dated everything. Okay. Across the board, but there is a stereotype that black men cheat. And so I think what he's trying to do, in my opinion, is kind of dispel that kind of, you know, change the mm -hmm. stereo, you know, the, the storyline of, well, I don't want to date a black man, you know, because he's going to cheat. And I have told people before I'm stepping outside of dating black men in order to experience other ethnicities, and I'm done with them. I, I've, I went through my phase of like, I'm done with them. I'm my white boys. White boys know how to treat you. And that's not true. All of them, <laughs> every that's ethnicity right. knows it will mistreat you. That's um, right. But why, why is this necessary? Why is this transient black men don't cheat? Um, I'd like to take a stab at it. And it would be great to hear Carrie's perspective. Okay. I think that what Charlemagne is doing is actually a very positive thing because I think that black men have been just denigrated so much mm -hmm. in the, the perception of them and who they are and so forth, we know that no one is perfect. Yep. And we know that in reality, there have been situations that people have seen and grown up with, with seeing how their parents True. have treated one another or seeing how their mothers have been treated and how they even personally have been treated. But to his point, black men don't cheat. I think that if people start really buying into that and believing in that, especially men and women, it, it hopefully creates a trend of behavior changes and belief in one another as, you know, men and women. I know personally in my life growing up as a kid, I had a good father, very good father. He was a good husband and Yay. a good father to my mother. They were married for 54 years. My uncles, my grandfather, all of them were men who did not cheat. Cousins too. They were all. So you were blessed very, to have relationship was, role models. I was blessed to have relationship role models. So from my purview, you know, I support what he's saying because if you believe in it, then maybe you'll live that mm -hmm. way too and you'll dictate your life. When you see that, if you see people misbehaving, then you know what? You, di you just remove yourself from their sphere. What do you think? What about you? Well, you know, I, I, I was thinking about you talking about black men cheating and do they cheat or not. And I remember what Chris Rock said, jokingly, yes. that men are only as faithful as their like options. options. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I think a lot of this has to do with the big picture that I don't think a lot of men get. Well, okay. let's just talk about a few things. Okay. Uh, earlier in the show, I mentioned that in terms of single family households in the black community, mm -hmm. it's, it's typically the black woman who's leading the household. This is in what I black, saw. While there are a lot of single women leading the household, it is not at a freaking 80 plus percent clip like it is in the black community. So we have this diminishing dynamic of right. black men not being in the home, yep. wondering what that influence is. 
The other thing is, if you have a breakdown of the black family, and we'll get to the whole cheating thing, but if you have a breakdown of the black family, mm-hmm. there's not a real appreciation of the family structure. Correct. That's right. So commitment has a lot to do with being ride or die with the entire family, understanding the importance of commitment. And so with that being the case, there certainly are black men that are absolutely faithful to their women, to their families and so forth. Right. And then we got some men that are absolutely trifling. Absolutely. I've had a few I, of them. <laughs> and, and, I have an amazing and, and, husband yeah. now. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, 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 and I am saying, so there's a couple of things. That, now, why is it that there is, um, there is probably, in matter of fact, there's a statistic that bear this out, that, that men who come from families that are intact with the followers in home and mm-hmm. so forth, they are less likely to cheat than those mm-hmm. that don't. The big A word, the big A word is accountability. Yep. As a matter of fact, um, what's his name that wrote that book? Um, his name had come to me. But he talked about how we know we got boys that are cheating. Mm-hmm. They got a good girl and they cheat. And it's like there's this bro code that we're not going to break. And we don't even, and not say we're going to put them on blast, yeah. but like, dude, you know something? That's a good woman you got and so forth. There's not enough of that. Yeah. That's a good woman you got. Dude, just be faithful. I know, you know, it doesn't, he- uh, doesn't help that a lot of women will throw themselves as men, despite knowing they're in a solid relationship and things Wait, as well. Wait, pause. Uh, yeah. Pause. So, yep. You can't just say, oh, a lot of women throw themselves at men. Wait. What do you mean by that? I, okay, so I'm not saying that women throw themselves at men. That is, uh, that's the reason why men cheat. Okay. I'm saying it doesn't help. And I, but, 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 what I'm, but what I'm also s- suggesting is, is that men need to be able to exercise the discipline uh-huh. of maintaining the relationship and that commitment thereof unless they decide to depart. And I'm saying that, typically speaking, we don't have communities that hold men accountable Correct. to be faithful. Okay. That's what I'm saying. So I mean, you, you were going to interject even before yeah. I did, like, wait, pause. Right. Well, so go ahead. a couple of things. One is... To Carrie's point about men being accountable, one statistic that I've read is that the more black fathers that are present in a community, just any community, right. actually helps to change the behavior of a lot of the boys. Right. If you have at least two black men that are positive and, and showing black boys, say, in a particular neighborhood that they're being accountable as fathers and husbands, they benefit from seeing that. Now, True. the other point about women and their behavior it does go both ways. Yes. I know, and I'll be honest. To be fair to what Carrie said, unfortunately, there are women, they know that a man is committed and they know that a man is, you know, already taken. It doesn't stop. Them. At least of us, a lot, majority of us at least have like one, that one friend we know that has messed with someone that had a boyfriend or that right. was married. And they have right. every single excuse in the world. And we could, it's, we could go off topic on that because there's a multitude of reasons. <laughs> but um, to the point of, I like what Carrie is saying. Men come together and say, look, dude, you've got a good woman. You know, enjoy her. Don't let cheating be the reason for why your relationship falls apart. Well, so I agree with both of your guys' points. So I'm going to say yes and. In addition to the family structure and what we saw growing up, in addition to uh, the gender roles of, you know, women coming on to men, you know, men do that and vice versa. We're not just going to say women are the only ones that throw themselves at married men. But part of your agreement when you committed to the relationship was, you know, for better or worse, you know, till death do us part, all of that mumbo jumbo that whether you believe it or not, when you said it, it's really about honoring your relationship. And if you're someone who does not have or uh, can experience or work from self-regulation Any temptation, whether she's throwing herself to you or not, is going to be a hard decision for you. So, yes, it looks like sacrifice. Yes, it looks like you having to have restraint when someone is throwing themselves at you. But there's always going to be temptation, whether it's a candy bar, whether it's a person, whether it's um, money in a bag laying on the street. But just because it continuously happens or happens, period, Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you go for it. There's oh, it, that's never going to stop. Since the beginning of time, there's always been people that are, have coveted someone in your relationship, right? Because you're right. even more sexier when you're in a relationship because now you are something to be desired right. because that, you are that's inaccessible. True. That's true. So just that alone now makes you more desirable. So yep. 
you're going to have to operate from a place of self-restraint. We're not going to be able to change the world and stop women or men from throwing themselves at people in relationships. What you have to do, to your point earlier, is take accountability for a community, take accountability for, you know, your friend, take accountability for the person next to you and say, and be that voice in their ear when they're not listening to the angel or God, you know, listen, you know, to their spirit. We sometimes have to interject and try to help pull them out because there's times where they're going to jump off of a ledge and ruin their entire life. Right, right. And we kind of sometimes need to be the voice of reasoning for one another. But, but you know, okay. So, but to your point with that, right, that makes complete sense, right? Exercise restraint. You know, you're in a committed relationship, you know, right from wrong. Okay. It seems like a freaking no brainer. Why is that so unpopular? Because we live in a culture. Because we haven't seen it. Okay, but wait, wait, here's another thing. We live in a culture that essentially celebrates a man who has multiple women. Correct. For instance, we all have seen the video, I guess the video, at least images on social media where they're talking about Layla Roshan gaining weight that completely justify Antoine Fuqua's cheating with nicole murphy so instead of just saying wow can you believe that you know mm-hmm. he's got a good wife good woman so forget the fact that she's got lupus or whatever the case may be and she's gained weight and, she, and giving him like three or four kids whatever the case is you know if you go to social media it looks as if they're saying well it's not if they're saying they are saying they're justifying if it. you as a woman see you let yourself slide see your man's gonna cheat with someone else that's in shape mm-hmm. or whatever else and what's the message at the end of the day it's not holding a freaking man accountable. It's putting the onus on the woman. Oh my God, what the hell? Mm-hmm. You know, um, I was so watching the old. Um, you're saying, I yeah. was watching the old uh, Bad Boys movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. Mm-hmm. And you may remember when uh, Martin Lawrence's daughter was about to go out on a date. Yeah. And Will Smith was at home. At home, but they Mike Lowry in the movie, right? Dude comes to the door. He said, oh, he about to go on a date. He said, oh, hell no. And they scared the hell out of him. Mm-hmm. They said, she better come back here smiling, happy, and so forth. And while we laugh at that, because he was scared to death, because there was what? There was a man at the home saying, I'm going to hold you accountable. We don't really have that in, in mainstream in our, in our community. Yep, I'm going to hold you accountable. If anything, it's said, like, dude, go ahead. She ain't going to find out about it. Go. And so that, so we don't really talk a lot about it. But that is actually woven in our culture, and mm-hmm. it is somewhat celebrated and and uh, and relished that if you're a man and you got a woman and just happen to have something on the side, so that makes you more of a man, which actually is not doing nothing but destroying our community. Yeah. And at the same time, is really indicative of our self esteem as well. Yes, it, for for let's compare though. I feel like we see oftentimes though white men cheating as well. Yep. Yes. It just as celebrated even, mm-hmm. except for it's almost as if they have more permission. It's almost yep. as if the richer that you are, the more wives that you can have, the more mistresses that you can have. Mm-hmm. And it hasn't tainted them as a culture in the sense of we're not we're they're they're not they're not branded as these um promiscuous beings or creatures because of their cheating it's one of those you know it's 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 permitted and you see a lot of wives and you know white culture is still staying right and when it comes to black culture it's looked as naughty it's looked at it as you know you know that's a bad man versus he did a bad thing it's a you know it's a microaggression yes i i i would go on record and say that black men in america have the worst stereotype than any other freaking living Say human it. creature on planet Earth. Mm-hmm. You go to any country, wherever else, black men in America. I mean, there are people from Africa that's not being trying to be associated with African Americans. <laughs> that's that's right. like, no, 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 no. no I'm, right. I'm, I'm from I'm from I'm from Kenya. No, yep. they, that's, they're not trying to be associated with us. So you go and talk about cheating; it's going to be amped up or whatever the negative stereotype is. Yeah. But let me say this too. I would even argue that there are, because, you know, microaggression is what other races think about, you mm-hmm. know, an, another race in this yeah. sense in the black community. But I would argue that we, in our own community, we have freaking microaggressions against one another. Yes. I mean, we'll trust you to do our hair. We'll trust you to make us a peach cobbler. We'll trust you to make mm-hmm. a Thanksgiving dinner. But I'm not going to trust you 
to be my real estate agent. I'm not going to trust you to be the architect design Ouch. my home. My I'm not going to trust you advisor. to Ouch. be my financial advisor mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. Because now nah, I'm going to go ahead with the Jewish person down the street that has an extraordinary stellar reputation. Ooh. Okay. So you're touching on something that is prevalent that we hear often. We don't support each other. Right. That's right. We don't buy each other's products. We don't frequent each other's restaurants. We don't right. support each other's clothing line. We don't hire you guys. Like we, we, we don't hire other blacks to do our business for us because we're afraid that they're less educated. We're afraid that they're going to mess it up. We're afraid, or like, you don't have a business. It's like, oh, I'll buy, okay, I'll go, I'll buy your product from you. Uh, can I get a hookup? We always want to hook up. Dang. Instead of just like <laughs> understanding, like, this, you know, I'm guilty we of recycle black dollars and see us flourish mm -hmm. as a community. Like I say, shoot, I can go over here and get that like for $75 instead mm -hmm. of trying to pay your 385 dollars Well, there's this assumption that we're lazy. So I'm not going to lie. I'm guilty of this as well. Yeah. And I do this to both of my people. Right. Like, I, because I am biracial, I, I, I get to be mean to two cultures. Um, <laughs> no, let me not say that. I don't get to be mean. But I do take it up. I do notice things that I do within my own, you know, personal stereotypes of my people because I was raised by both where there's certain stereotypes I have about my Mexican grocery store. You know, I, I well, I don't, oh, I'm going to go to Ralph's. I don't feel like going to Vallarta because I don't feel like being around my people like this messier or when it comes to, you know, shopping, uh, you know, if it's a black owned business, oh, well, she's not going to have this, the products that I need. I'm just going to Target. Like, you know, we do that to one another and I'm guilty of that. How do I change that? Thinking though, when I have that stereotype in my mind, because maybe I've seen some of my family who's irresponsible, or maybe I've seen some of you know my friends who you know may not handle the business the way that it should be. Now, how do I support something when I have it stuck in my mind that it's not as valuable or revered as a white business or a Jewish business or an Asian business? How? Well, a lot of things are just really about exposure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's about dialogue. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to come to a Keep It 100 Masterclass, too, hey, when we talk about this kind of stuff. That's exactly what but, I was going to say. But, hey, you know, <laughs> I mean, we've got to talk about this exactly. and be honest and say, look, I just kind of feel because the last time, you know, you did my hair, you, like, charged me all this, and my aunt's all burnt up and so forth and whatever. So if I go down to the street, down, you know, the white girl, she did it the right way, whatever it may be. So She was on time. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. I've experienced that as well. I'm like, dang, mm -hmm. but my white hairdresser, mm -hmm. like when she does a blowout versus my Mexican hairdresser versus my black hairdresser, and I do have all three. I have a Jewish hairdresser. I have a <laughs> Mexican hairdresser, and I have a black hairdresser, all for three different things. One cuts my curls, one presses me out the best, and then the other one colors me the best. So... <laughs> So you're saying I, I might just only have to go to one if I actually have the conversation with them, communication of we could be doing this better, you guys. Like hold them to a higher standard mm -hmm. versus having the assumption that they can't. Right, right. That's right. Right. And you know, there are some people in our community that they have a, a business and they don't really have a business. And so we know we have to deal Ooh, with that as well. Break so it we down. What's a business? Sh we we want to make sure that, you know, there's some people who are like, they're essentially just hustling. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, um, but no, but, but at the end of the day, I mean, we need to come together and talk about the things that keep us apart would be from That's relationships, right. you know, you know, things that have to do with money, just whatever. And a, a lot of things are completely representative of how, um, how we grew up, you know, um, your cousin on our team, Andrea Collins, talks about, you know, having a mindset of scarcity or of an abundance, yes. which established when you're a child. I worked so hard on that. Yeah. So, Ooh. I mean, until we began to really examine and pull back and look at things um, and, and realize how much our who we are as where we were as children mm -hmm. and those perspectives, if we don't really address that, we're just going to be an adult child with the same needs. I'll give a quick example. So growing up, you know, we were we weren't poor in St. Louis. We were po p o. <laughs> so you know, we didn't have a lot of food. So here I am now, grown kids. They, Dad, you know, I'm hungry. Well, instead of just hearing it's that it's time to eat and it's just time to feed them, mm -hmm. the little boy in me that was deprived and dealt and lived in scarcity. Yeah began to like so i began to overfeed them like oh i got you don't worry you're not gonna starve anymore. yeah and I had to do the opposite that. now i said look it's a different thing but the drivers of that was completely birthed out of yeah you know my uh my childhood oh no yeah. like i have gotten into i had to you know realize this and i've had even guest speakers come in to talk about the abundance mindset and manifestation because 
I grew up poor, po like you, okay? Right, right, right. <laughs> and so I've noticed myself in the same thing, getting into fights now with my husband because he wants to use coupons. And I'm like, no, I don't want to feel like I'm poor again. Right. No, we're, we're just paying for this cereal outright. Right. And he's like, but a coupon will save us money. Right. And I'm like, but I don't want to feel poor because, right. you know, that's what I saw. Like, and right. I want the best cereal. Like, right. he's like, well, we can save money if we get this other cereal. I'm like, no, I want the best. Right. And it was cereal. We literally got into right. a fight over cereal because I didn't want to feel that right. poverty constantly, again. Constantly mm-hmm. trying to do things to affirm the fact we're not that yes. person or there and so forth. And mm-hmm. some of, you know, I mean, you might like nice things, but it shouldn't be driven by the deficit of where you are in your childhood. But why don't we do that with our daddy syndrome? Why don't us as a community, why don't black men say, my daddy wasn't there, so I'm going to do the best I can to be there. Why do we do that when it comes to money? You know, we overcompensate. But when mm-hmm. it comes to our love life and our relationships, we don't try to overcompensate. Right. That is why I really like the question that you opened up with where you said, when did you start to fall in love with yourself? Mm -hmm. And did you fall in love with yourself before you met someone that you fell in love with or afterwards? That says a lot about how you're going to approach relationships, how you perceive yourself, how you perceive that other Mm -hmm. person and how that plays out and where you are, where you both are. Right. Right. You know, I, I think it's important too, and, Whoever's listening to the show. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, they really need to hear it. Hear this. If your dad is not in your life mm-hmm. or maybe he's around, but he's never wasn't really there. Don't get it twisted. And Mary J. Blige, I mean, she's kind of committed like half her scene career to kind of addressing <laughs> the whole daddy issue, which I think is cool. But there is a void in you yes. that can only be filled by daddy. And trust me, even if daddy's not around, you're going to try to fill that void. Absolutely. So you're going to go after men, relationships, and some of the relationships may be abusive, but maybe they hold you during sex. Or maybe they are able to provide some level of protection despite the fact that they're a game banger or whatever the case may be. Whatever mm-hmm. sort of dysfunction is, but there's something about the that relationship. Something. And then what's interesting, you meet a guy who may be legit, doesn't, maybe it's not about that life or whatever else, you know, wants to love you, but because he doesn't, you know, he's not as edgy and so forth. You say, wow, you know, I don't really feel any chemistry. Well, you're, the, the, mm-hmm. the familiarity of the dysfunction, mm. you're not really picking up. Yeah. So you, you translate that into saying, mm-hmm. well, yeah, I can't, I can't really be with you. But the huge thing in terms of how our parents and what our parents mean a lot, same thing with young boys with their mothers. Those things are huge. And so this is also really a really big plug of, of, for advancing mental health. That is really is cool to go get therapy. We all are jacked up. We all have got some kind of uh, uh, PTSD going on. All of us. None of us are exempt from it. Yeah. And we've got to go into therapy. We've got to talk to someone about our past. Our and so traumas, forth, yeah. So that we can get healthy because generational trauma is prevalent and it continues to perpetuate itself. But we in our organization, what we're hoping to do is truncate that bad boy, mm-hmm. stop it in its tracks. Let's talk about these things which hopefully will be a springboard to people uh, seeking additional help to uh, resolve their issues. For those listeners that are tuning in right now, what are some spicy tips that we could be doing to start trying to change this so we don't continue to perpetuate the dysfunction in the family structure that we grew up with? Step number one would be what? (sighs) Let's start having the conversation. Okay, so we got the conversation going. Step number two is what? Okay. You know what I would say? One thing is just, I think is really important is to, there's power in people who know you. Mm-hmm. So again, consistent with this whole thing of being honest and transparent, ask two or three people that you know and trust, um, that know you very well. Yeah. And ask them, what do you think about me? You think I really, I mean, take the gloves off, be honest. Don't just say anything. Just don't placate me, whatever else. Be honest with me. What do you think about me? What I'm good at, what I'm bad at, where you see me having struggles. You followed me on my journey for X number of years. Help me understand. And the sobering reality, Mm -hmm. if they're honest with you, hopefully be enough to have further conversation, maybe seek therapy and other things as well. Mm, And all feedback is good feedback. All feedback is good yeah. feedback. So right. we're going to have to be vulnerable then, get a little constructive criticism. And that may be challenging for you guys to actually ask people's real authentic opinion of you. I don't think that majority of us are friends with yes men, but there are certain things, certain conversations that our friends avoid because right. they know it's going to hurt our feelings or they know that it may turn into an argument or we may be sensitive to certain things. 
And so we may be, you know, kind of skating around conversations that need to be had in our relationships. And there's been times, you know, even in my profession where I've had to hold back because I think that there's conversations that I couldn't have with friends about the road that they were going down in their relationships. And I had to stop myself and I'm like, okay, I'm doing them a disservice by saying, well, it's none of my business, even though I know better, like it's her choice, her lesson. I actually had to have some tough conversations with people when I noticed them mirroring the behaviors of their mother and fathers when it came to the relationship patterns. Right. And that was a tough conversation to have because it made them look at themselves. And I mean, there was some, there was a lot of tears. So right. just be prepared, be prepared, yeah, yeah. Um, for, you know, for some of the, the, those tears. But what it did is also gave additional perspective and insight into areas of change that were necessary. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, if we don't, we may not be in a place where we're ready to hop into therapy tomorrow. Right. But I like your suggestion of asking friends to do somewhat of a, you know, SWOT analysis on us. Right. And, you know, give us insight into, you know, our personal lives and from a perspective that we might, may not be seeing things from. Because sometimes we have some, you know, rose colored glasses on right. or, you know, sometimes, you know, we have a very negative perspective, too. Right. So I think that I like that friend suggestion. Yeah. And, and that's the whole reason for why we do the whole fishbowl conversation at Keeping It 100. Because when we put those questions out there, those are true questions that are coming from people that have either been to our events or they're curious about, you know, what they're going through. Yeah. And having someone who has no relation to you or no knowledge of you to just answer the question from their perspective, it does help. So is there going to be an opportunity for like live audience participation where they're able to grab the mic? And, oh, yeah. Well, well, hey, yes. I want to know, you know. Well, with, you know, with the fishbowl, again, there are multiple questions that are mm-hmm. very common in mainstream. Um, so we actually go to the audience and they select a question. Oh, they, they select get, the question and then, pull it out. Right. And so what's interesting, there's a lot of vigorous, um, provocative, riveting dialogue that takes place as a result of that, right? You yeah. already know it's going to get but, spicy. But what's yes. interesting is that you're not necessarily limited to that question because that question could inspire another question. So, oh, great. So we can so throw another question So it's very organic. Again, uh-huh. it's about being comfortable in space. And so we've always tried to have our event in homes. It's going to be in a very nice home on, on, on Saturday. But, it's, uh, but the thought is you're in this community of people who are very interested in wanting to explore and understand the dynamics mm. of the opposite sex. And a lot of people, they're not going to like go to therapy to your point, but this is a great place. If you just really feel as though that, man, I don't really get why in the world I can't do this. Why keep Mm -hmm. failing here? You'd be amazed at the insight that will, uh, that will emerge as a result of Mm -hmm. just your participation. And obviously they have opportunity to engage you and Chris afterwards. For oh, further. yes. We'll answer a yeah. million questions. I know I'm like a jokester and I'm silly and I say crazy things, but at the true like heart of heart, I take relationships very seriously. Yeah. And I believe that relationships are everything and everything are relationships. No matter if you're going to the bank, if you're talking to the teller, no matter if you're trying to find a lover, no matter if it's a relationship with your mother and father. Yeah. So, you know, it, there will be fun. I'm definitely going to get spicy. We're going to keep things sexy, but it's going to get serious for a second too. And then we're going to go back to the turn up. But, um, <laughs> right, right, right. but to your point earlier, you said, you know, there's some things that we think when it comes to gender um, that we, you know, it's, 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 you know, male, female dynamic that we don't understand. We're going to get insight to. What do you think is the biggest mistake or misconception as women, and I'm not going to say against men, but women versus men that we have about one another? What is the biggest misconception men have about women? And what is the biggest misconception women have about men? You take that, Stephanie. Wow. Okay. Let's see. I think one of the biggest misconceptions that women have about men is that there are no good men out there. Yes. Agreed. Yes, that's the biggest misconception. Agree with that one so much. Yep. And I think for men, one of the biggest misconceptions about women is that men tend to believe that women only want material things, they only want certain aesthetic things, and that they aren't looking for real organic connection and love. And I've run across that. I've been places where men will immediately tell me, I make X amount of money. Don't you want to go out with me? Oh, my gosh. So I'll leave it right there. <laughs> well, I, well, I got a few things. I think a lot of black women, when they see a black man, they, I think a, a lot, not saying all, but it's quite common. I find black women just, just completely believe that black men are commitment averse. Okay. That there's no way, form or fashion, 
that we want to explore a commitment with a woman. Mm -hmm. I think black men have a problem with women, with black women, yeah. and believe that, uh, that a lot of you guys are crazy. They think that We're all, passionate, the, okay. Passionate, right. There you go. <laughs> um, and that... Um, and that you don't trust us, and that we're and we're, not, we're untrustworthy. And I think that these um, beliefs, I think, have come from their own experiences mm -hmm. and probably experience with their friends as well. Well, we so saw forth. growing up, but with there's our moms. using right. It's mm -hmm. but that's why it's important to have the forum, mm -hmm. to have the conversation, and talk about those things. And I don't think we really have those type of conversations, maybe over drinks and so forth, and it kind of comes and goes and whatever else. But what was great. I mean, what I'm sort of suggesting is how Keep 100 evolved. Mm -hmm. Sitting around with friends, we were talking about our old relationship dysfunction, about the opposite sex, and they're about us, and so forth. And we began to see, wow, we really get somewhere if yeah. we begin to have a conversation. So, mm -hmm. No, I love that. And I think that we need to see more of that. We, we need to see there are faithful women, there are faithful men. We need to see that... You know, not every man has commitment issues. Right. I'm a firm right. believer that it really is about timing. It doesn't necessarily yes. <laughs> have to do with him not wanting to be faithful. That's right. <laughs> you, you just said the key thing. It's about timing. And that's one of the things that I think that most people can carry away. If you're really looking for a commitment with a man and you're trying to get out there and navigate, get a sense of where he is. Because either he's ready for commitment or he's not. If he's not. You know, just keep it moving. Yeah. If you find that he is, let's try to make this connection work. Let's see if this works. Yeah. 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 I mean, the other thing, too, is, I mean, think about it. Now, if you're just looking at a date, you just look at a hookup every once in a while, none of the stuff really matters. Right. You just do, do, do it you. It right. You get swiped. Turn up, whatever. <laughs> but if you're talking about someone who's going to be a husband, someone's mm -hmm. going to be a wife, I'm going to go on a limb and say not everyone has those attributes that are worthy for you to throw away the black book yep. and say, I'm going to forsake all others. So what does that mean inherently? Inherently what that means is that a lot of people that's going to come your way don't qualify. So don't be frustrated by the fact that there are a lot of people that say, yeah, nah, whatever else. That just means you're probably getting closer to the one person because yep, you're only going to marry one person, right? Yeah, agreed. We're not that's Mormons the goal. or anything like that. We're, we're in one person that you're going to spend the rest of your life with. And the uniqueness about that person for you is going to your, pro I mean, it could happen like overnight, but the likelihood is it might take a little time. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's okay to be discriminating and not get discouraged by the fact that all these uh, potential opportunities aren't panning out right away. It, it seems like, and particularly for women, it seems as though they feel so if they don't have this groundswell of Men, this critical mask of men coming their way, the all hopes of getting married is, is out the window. Not true. Because even if you got 100 men coming your way, I mean, you can only marry one. <laughs> that part. <laughs> yeah, so I, I agree with you guys at this point. I love that you're saying that because a lot of women feel like they're disqualified because they're overqualified. And that is not true. That, I think, is a, a myth that we perpetuate. And then because we do, it fosters this thirst this extra hunger right. to take whatever that you can get, even if he's not qualified or even if she's not qualified. And it's unfortunate, you know, that we feel like we have to settle and I, I don't want to see people settle. And it's unfortunate that we have been told that there's not an abundance of men and that we have to, but that means that we're operating from a place of fear. And if I could tell you anything, do not choose your life partner based off of fear. You really yeah. have to say, is this person for me? Are they qualified Iron sharpens iron. So if they're not qualified to be your partner, to be your lover, and they don't maybe have to have the exact resume, but they have to at least balance yours out. And so if they cannot do that, don't just choose so that you have somebody. Right. And hopefully you will be at keeping it 100 and meet somebody. <laughs> hey, okay. So we have to wrap up the show. I want you guys to shout out all of your platforms where people can find you, where they can learn more about you. Um, give us all of that like good juicy juice so that they can stay connected to you and educate and empower themselves. Okay, so we are available on all the social media platforms at Keeping It 100, 100 LA. Uh, so it'll be Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. And it's Keeping with the G, not Keeping. Keeping It 100 LA. Um, to uh, RCP for our event, uh, you can go to keepingit100la.org and you can go there as well. Or you just go West Hills 2019 
www.eventbrite.com. You can also get your tickets there as well. And again, our event is the, this coming Saturday, which is uh, Saturday, August 3rd. And we're honored to have Spice Mari. I'm so gonna be excited. Our, our host. So I got to find my white um, outfit. Starts at 7 p.m. <laughs> all, all white linen theme or white attire. Not necessarily linen, but white uh, attire and so forth. And the actual specific address to the home will be disclosed to all people who confirm for the event starting Thursday. That is the 31st of July, I believe So it they'll is. get the address um, location, this private location right. on Thursday. Okay. Absolutely. And then but, Stephanie, what about you? I think Carrie covered all the bases, but the message that I want, uh, hopefully that resonates with everyone is that there are a lot of people looking for love, both male and female. And we're all trying to navigate in this world that we're mm -hmm. living in. And the more open that you stay, the more flexible that you are, the more that you open your eyes and just take every experience that you have as a lesson, the better off you'll be in finding that person. Ooh, agreed. Yes, we want to, I'm here for all of that. We want to help you find some love. So I'm so excited to see you guys at Keeping It 100. Uh, make sure that you get your tickets so that you can spend some QT time with me and Chris and the rest of the Keeping It 100 organization. I really want you guys to make sure that you sign up for some classes. Education is empowerment. And look, we need to make sure that we have the tools and the resources are here. We, we just need to grab the tools to be able to exercise uh, God's purpose for our life, finding our partner mate, our purpose mate, and let us help you guys win. With that, you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at SpicyMati. Go to thespicylife.com, sign up for some services if you want some consultation. And then also make sure you download this episode, subscribe, and send it to a friend. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.